Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe that the Ironworker Gaming Channel has been on YouTube for 8 months now and we have not talked about Suros Regime. I've been reviewing pretty much every gun under the sun, but Suros didn't show up as a viewer requested weapon for quite a while. But finally, we had a few requests come in for it. So I moved Suros up on the list a little bit, because this gun needs to be discussed. This gun deserves to be discussed, and it's probably a good idea to take a look at this weapon as we're heading into Beyond Light. Especially since 600 RPM auto rifles are going to see a slight nerf going forward. But ever since the early days of Destiny 1, Suros has been a strong contender in the Crucible. And before Thorn came into the picture, Suros was the gun to use in PvP during the early days of the franchise. Now gun's perk sets looked a little bit different back then, but Suros carried forward all of its basic functionality into Destiny 2. And currently, here in Season of Arrivals, this is as strong as I ever remember auto rifles being. And in my humble opinion, dropping adaptive autos down a peg to allow other weapons to have room to breathe in the upcoming DLC is a welcome change. But I really don't know if Suros is gonna care. Suros might not give a fly and flip about these nerfs. I really think that Suros is packing too much utility and dispenses enough damage that reducing its damage by a point and a half per bullet is really going to hurt it much at all. We're going to talk about that in this review, and we'll dive into Suros and see what makes it such a powerful weapon. And if at any point during this video you find it useful, helpful, or enjoyable, a like would be greatly appreciated. And also consider subscribing. The community really is the backbone of this channel, and it's because of you that this channel keeps moving forward. But let's get into the review by first taking a look at Suros' stats and damage numbers. Suros Regime is an exotic kinetic auto rifle shooting at a base 600 rounds per minute with 36 rounds in the magazine. For the stats, when compared to other 600 RPM auto rifles, Suros is very close to the top of the pack in handling. The reload speed is only bested by Monte Carlo, and Hardlight is the only 600 auto that has better range and stability. So across the board, Suros is extremely strong. For the hidden stats on Light.gg, Suros has a solid aim assist value of 68 with a bounce intensity of 50 in a recoil direction that will pull this weapon to the left. For the usage rate according to Destiny Tracker, Suros is firmly a top 10 weapon sitting at number 6 in quick play crucible game modes over the past month. The intrinsic trait is Suros Legacy. The bottom half of the magazine will deal bonus damage, and this weapon does have a chance to return health on a kill. And for the exotic perk, we kinda have two of them here, and they're both selectable fire modes. First, Dual Speed Receiver. Aiming down sights reduces the weapon's fire rate, but increases the damage. And Spinning Up. Holding down the trigger increases the weapon's fire rate. There is a catalyst for Suros that, once obtained, can be unlocked by getting 300 Crucible final blows with this weapon. And I did complete this catalyst for the weapon review. For the damage numbers, the first thing I want to share with you is that Suros' base crit damage is lower than that of standard adaptive auto rifles. Gnawing Hunger is hitting for 26 points of damage on a crit, while Suros is only hitting for 24. But do keep in mind these numbers are rounded up just a touch. But we'll start off here with our base damage numbers. Suros will initially hit for 24 points of damage on a crit and 16 points of damage to the body. Other adaptive autos have an optimal time to kill of 0.7 seconds requiring 7 crits in one body. This is not the case for Suros, so our optimal time to kill will be 0.8 seconds requiring 8 crits in one body shot, and our body shot time to kill will be 1.2 seconds requiring 13 shots landed. Due to the Suros Legacy intrinsic trait, once we have 18 rounds left in the magazine, we will see a damage increase. Crits will start hitting targets for 26 points of damage, and the last bullet landed will hit for 27. Body shots will start hitting for 17 points of damage until the final 3 rounds of the magazine that will hit for 18. Now we see that optimal time to kill drop down to 0.7 seconds with 7 crits and 1 body shot. And this holds true no matter how far down past half that you are in the magazine. The body shot time to kill is unaffected by this damage increase though. But when we have spinning up selected, we also see a fire rate increase as we're laying on the trigger. Once we are down to 20 bullets left in the magazine, our fire rate will jump to 720 rounds per minute. And when we hit 10 rounds left in the magazine, the fire rate increases to 900 rounds per minute. So, when the weapon is firing at 720 rounds per minute, our optimal time to kill is 0.6 seconds, and our body shot time to kill will be 1 second flat. When the weapon starts firing at 900 rounds per minute, the optimal time to kill will drop to 0.47 seconds, and the body shot time to kill will be 0.8 seconds. For the physical range in the spinning up mode, Suros will hit for full damage from up to 28 meters away. Stepping back to 29 is where we start to see damage fall off. 
Now for dual speed receiver. Suros is hitting for 36 points of damage on a crit and 22 points of damage for the body, giving us an optimal time to kill of 0.83 seconds by landing five crits in one body shot and a body shot time to kill of 1.33 seconds with nine shots landed. For the intrinsic damage increase, crit damage jumps to 38 points on the 18th bullet fired and the last three bullets fired in the magazine will hit for 39 points of damage. So we can barely eke out a five shot kill by landing all crits with the final five bullets in the magazine for an optimal time to kill of 0.66 seconds. For body shots, the damage is 24 initially and then 25 with the last two rounds of the magazine. So as soon as the damage boost becomes active, we can down targets in eight body shots taking 1.16 seconds. For the health regen and capabilities, I tested both with and without the catalyst. My sample size was 20 for each and I recorded the results. Without the catalyst, 10 times I got healed, 10 times I didn't. So 50-50 without the catalyst seems like a good baseline. But once I did have the catalyst unlocked, 16 out of the 20 times I did start to see health regeneration. And maybe I was just getting lucky, but roughly 75% of the time to get your health back on a kill isn't too shabby in my book. But let's get into the Crucible and we'll start talking about Suros' performance. All right, to start out, I want to talk about these nerfs that we're going to see to 600 RPM auto rifles. With the changes, your base legendary adaptive frame auto rifles are going to take 8 crits in one body to down a target in 0.8 seconds after the changes, which are the same numbers that we're seeing out of Suros right now. Now, there is a chance that Suros is an individually tuned weapon and will not fall under this blanket nerf. Now, Suros' damage was increased with the auto rifle buff, so this is probably not the case. But how much is this nerf going to affect Suros' damage output? If we're seeing around 22 points of damage post nerf on Suros, that means it can still maintain its optimal time to kill of 0.8 seconds. Worst case scenario here, it's going to take 9 crits rather than 8 crits in one body to down a target. But this still does put the base optimal time to kill in line with all other 600 auto rifles post nerf. Whereas currently, Suros is killing in a tenth of a second slower. And right now, Suros is arguably one of the strongest auto rifles in the game. And performance wise, this nerf to 600 RPM auto rifles could make Suros stronger when compared to the rest of the archetype. As it sits, a 0.8 second optimal time to kill is very respectable, and a 1.2 second body shot time to kill is extremely good. Especially when considering we can hit these numbers from up to 28 meters away. But due to the increasing fire rate and the additional bullet damage halfway through the magazine, Suros is a great tool for pre-firing corners or pre-firing before you step in the lanes. It's a weapon that really rewards you for anticipating the enemy player's movement. Because those time to kills once this weapon is spun up are some of the best in the game bar none. So this makes dealing with multiple targets much easier also. Once you drop your first enemy, the next two are going to go down exponentially faster as long as you can maintain line of sight while holding down the trigger. What makes this scenario even better is the chance of getting healed after every kill. Now this isn't something that should be relied upon because it's only a chance of getting healed, but I personally had much more confidence when engaging multiple enemy players, especially once the catalyst was unlocked with the increased chance of getting healed on a kill. Then the stats across the board are great. The high handling and reload speed makes Suros feel like a very fluid weapon. The strong marks and stability makes Suros' recoil pretty effortless to manage. And on top of that, the high range stat and good aim assist value seem to add a good deal of bullet magnetism to the rounds fired. Shots just all in all seem to land very consistently with Suros, even in the hands of a player with potato aim such as myself. Then dual speed receiver. Back in Destiny 1, this was my preferred fire mode with Suros. Simply because if you were tapping in your shots, you could exceed the weapon's base fire rate. This really doesn't seem to work in Destiny 2, but honestly, the fire mode is a little bit better than I gave it credit for. The time to kills are pretty good at base and line up perfectly with high impact auto rifles. And I was actually pretty impressed to see that it could deal lethal damage in 0.66 seconds at the end of the magazine. Due to the potency of spinning up though, I really do think that is the way to go. But if you want a slower firing auto rifle that does have awesome stats, it's definitely a viable option. For some drawbacks, and if I had to nitpick, currently that 0.8 second optimal base time to kill can get outgunned by a few other weapon classes and 600 RPM auto rifles currently carrying a 0.7 second optimal time to kill. Then that 28 meter range is a shade lower than other weapons in the archetype, but not by much, just, just a little bit. Then it is an auto rifle, so you do have to factor in time out of cover while maintaining line of sight on a target. 
And knowing those RPMs are going to ramp up as you hold on the trigger, it can cause you to overcommit to gunfights, which sometimes ends poorly. Then again, maybe this is just a me problem. Then, hand cannons in general are receiving a range buff in Beyond Light. While all the 150s except for Sunshot are going to see their time to kills reduced, they will be able to carry full damage from further out than Suros. It's definitely something you're going to want to look out for. So for the verdict, and I think it pretty much goes without saying that Suros Regime is an absolute monster of a gun in the Crucible. And if everything plays out the way I think it's going to in Beyond Light, Suros is going to get passively stronger in the weapon class. But even for where it's at currently, there's just a tremendous upside to using this gun. I mean, we have extremely fast time to kills, great stats, and the potential to heal the wielder. On top of all that is the fact that this is such an easy weapon to use, and performs great for players on all skill levels. The benefits received by equipping Suros just can't be ignored, and I'm going to say that Suros is going to continue to be a very strong weapon for the foreseeable future. So if you did enjoy the video, a like would be greatly appreciated, and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to catch many more weapon reviews as we move into Beyond Light. If you'd like to catch me live, you can look for Ironworker814 on Twitch. Drop me a follow and you'll get notified whenever I hop on. If you'd want to contact me, you can look for Ironworker814 on Twitter, but the best way to do so is simply to comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.